Okay, before I go on and uh, show about setting a breakpoint in a, in a separate uh, file or a separate assembly, um, I, I want to review the, uh, the breakpoints uh, box that you have here. Um, you can open this, if I close it, you can open it by uh, clicking on this button here or pressing, like it says, the Alt F9 keys. So anyway, um, this just shows you the breakpoints that you have set. Uh, the condition, if there is any, the, the top one that doesn't have any condition, and the second one does. This one counts equal to 300. Shows you the hit count. Um, it's break always. The filter, if there is any set. And one hit, what are we going to do? It's going to print a message on both of those. If we click here in the columns, it just shows you which uh, columns uh, are uh, listed there. The function, it'll tell you what function the, the breakpoint is in. Oh, there's no fr functions listed on here because we're actually inside the main loop. So let's go ahead and uh, go forward with this. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and create a, a new, uh, let me close this uh, watch window. Let's create a, a new uh, source file and we'll do that. I'll click on the project file or, and then I'll uh, add a new Arduino object item. And we'll just call this, uh, oh, how about sub routine? That's uh, easy. And you notice it automatically puts the INO suffix on the file. And up here, let's uh, create a oh, procedure function. Uh, let me see. Let's, let's do a function um, that's going to return a long. And we'll call this. How about something simple like add 5? That keeps out of trouble. And it's going to take a long as a parameter, what's we'll called a parameter var. And we'll just do something. Um, I normally don't uh, create a, a ret val variable, but for my debugging purposes, I think I, I want to just so we'll just call, create a long. Oops, if I help it. Hey. I don't think I've talked about uh, the IntelliSense either, have I? Um, you go to type a, uh, a uh, variable name, uh, an operator, uh, a keyword, and it'll help you along. Like right here, I typed an L. To accept it, you just press tab or enter. Um, it's simple stuff, anybody. I just kind of forgot all about it because I'm so used to working with Studio. but. Uh, it's uh, if you go back down to your Arduino IDEs, you really miss it because you become dependent upon it. But anyway, back to this, I'm going to go go ahead and declare long. Uh, we're going to create a retval. Always initialize your variables. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to say long is equal to Far or not long. Gosh, duh. Sorry about that. Retval is equal to var plus five. So we're just going to add five to that variable each time it's passed to us, and then we'll just return tab. Oops. Return. Oops. <laughs> Clumsy fingers today. <laughs> Usually not this bad. Okay, so we're going to return retval. Okay, cool. And uh, go back to our uh, initial file, the main file, if you will. And uh, down here, instead of incrementing count, and I think I'll go ahead and you don't see many uh, type warnings, but uh, just uh, to forego it, I'm going to go ahead and assign uh, count as a long. Okay, and then instead of incrementing count, I'm going to, I want to see I changed it to uh, equals one instead of zero also. Count is equal to add five. Oops. 
and you see it that it found it after I had typed it all out. And then we're just going to pass it count and return. So that'll increment the count by five each time and by calling a subroutine in a, in a separate file. Okay, so let's uh let's go ahead and uh, change this condition. So we're in multiples of five now, and let's uh, instead of saying equal to, let's uh, let's go count is greater than. Oh, let's say three thousand. Okay. When that happens. We meet our condition. It's going to come down here, and we're going to put greater than 3,000. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, um, to, uh, to show you, I want to prove another little point here. Instead of a, let's go ahead. I want to go ahead and uh, misspell this word on purpose. Okay, I want to show you a little neat little feature of this. We go ahead and go to compile, and obviously it's going to fail. Okay, down here it says that uh, subroutine ino ret var was not declared in the scope. So if we just double click on that uh, error, it's going to take us right to the line in that file where we have an issue. And right there it was, it was misspelling it ret bow, not ret var. I just wanted to point that out. That's a quick way of jumping between files or if you have long code you can jump back and forth or you're not sure certain of the line numbers. I always leave my line numbers turned on for that very reason. It's just easier to trace issues. But we should be able to compile now. And it's compiling, it's uploading, and it's opened up our list here. And once we get above 3,000, it might have been a, a bit much, but... Sorry about the wait. I just kind of grabbed 3,000. I knew that 300 was going to be way too fast, but uh, it'll just take a second here now. And bang, we hit it. And you notice we're not in exact multiples of five, and I didn't even catch that when I put that uh, multiple of five in there, so it's a good thing that I had a greater than, so it was, uh, the actual count, value count is 3,001, but since our uh, uh, breakpoint was set up for the condition greater than 3,000. We made it. And I'm not sure if I talked about this before or not, but if you hover over your breakpoints, you're able to see the actual uh, content of them. This is a lot faster than actually right-clicking and going in there and trying to look at the condition. Cause just all you have to do is hover, and it's right there in that top line. And down here in our debug message, you see that uh, our uh, messages print were greater than 1,000. Uh, the processor is uh, halted. It's waiting for a uh, us to do something in a debugger. If we just go ahead, um, since we're actually at a greater than value here, it's going to um, break again. So, uh, what it probably ought to do is just to remove the breakpoint, delete the breakpoint. And now, this breakpoint is still going to be active. I'm going to have to uh, uh, recompile for it to a change. So let's uh, go ahead and hit this a couple times, and there we go. So it says it asks if we want to rebuild. Yes. So yeah, that got me out of my breakpoint. And the show runs again. This time it's not going to stop though because uh, there's no breakpoint there. Um, we can also set the uh, the breakpoint uh, in this uh, over here. Uh, we go here, and then. If uh, the condition, if uh, 
fret vowel is greater than 3000 and fret vowel oops it's less than 3005 then we're going to break uh, I'm not sure about the precedence here and again you have to use two ampersands for your and so both those conditions have to be true in order for this uh, condition to be met and click OK and this time we're going to break in that separate uh, assembly, the uh, subroutine file. So let's uh, go ahead and recompile. Uh, we're not going to have a count, or a ret valve is actually going to be our count, so I'm not going to add that extra variable, and I couldn't do it because it's going to be outside of the scope anyway. So we're going to go ahead and recompile, and at 3001, the ret valve should hit the, uh, the breakpoint and stop the execution of the program. Now this would be uh, you know, great if you had a, a subroutine and a separate assembly that uh, uh, you can use it as a bounds checker, you know, so it's that if you have an integer that uh, for whatever reason it's, it's rolling over, you can set your uh, breakpoint there so it's 32,000, blah, 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 you can uh, stop program execution and, and just take a look and see what the heck was going on. I haven't been into this uh, uh, deep enough to actually see if you were able to take a look at the call stacks and uh, uh, the uh, other values that it may have caused that, but uh, I will sometime. And we're getting close on our interrupt, and it didn't hit. Okay, um, I kind of overlooked the point that. Uh, a breakpoint really doesn't like to be on a return statement, <laughs> so that's a that's my bad again. So I mean, live and learn, I guess. But the so I learn a lot doing these videos. So I mean, it it, uh, it works both ways. You know, that you learn an awful lot about things when you actually have to sit here and talk about them. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it the breakpoint over here, actually on the uh, retval assignment. We'll go down here into the condition, and we'll try it again. It's called retval greater than, let's knock it down something reasonable I guess then, greater than 500 and ret val less than, uh, let's say 506. So I think it's going to, yeah, because it starts at 1, multiples of 5, so it should be hit at, at 501. Okay, and since we have our condition set, we got to tell it what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to print a message and let's put uh, 501. How about that? And there we go. And we want to pause execution. And since this is, uh, should only pause it once because of the uh, condition we set on that breakpoint. And again, down here in our breakpoint window, so we can. Uh, we can see those easily from our, our main file. So the one ret vowel is greater than 500 and ret vowel is also less than 600. Both those conditions are true. We're going to break out. Okay, and this is just uh, our counter. And let's give her a shot and see what happens. Yes. Error compiling. Let me see here. Subroutine INO ret valve is not declared in the scope. Ah, do you see that? It's a case deal. So if I just double click on that again, it takes me to the line where the issue was. And inside of my breakpoint, ret valve, right there, that's a problem. Okay. The, uh, 
output is is there. It does tell you whereabouts it is, and that's a secret that I've learned. Is if you just wherever there is that, if you just click on it, it's going to take you right to that line, and looked at it, and well, ret valve's fine there, but there's a breakpoint on the line, so you need to make sure you look inside that breakpoint. Okay, so let's go ahead and compiler again. We'll go back to our main file. This time it compiles just fine. And it fires up here. And we should break out of here right on time. You gotta love that. Um, down here you can see the the count. Four <coughs> four ninety six. And when it came through here and we added five to it, we hit five oh one. Brit bow. It's actually equal to 501 now. I, I don't think we can hover above it. And I'm uh, not sure if the media window will tell us the values or not. I've have never tried this, so this is something new here for me. So we type retval, question mark, and it's not going to return any values. So never mind that, uh, that point. <laughs> it's useless. But anyway, uh, we... Uh, went ahead and it's fired back up here obviously again so let's go ahead and uh, just reset it you compile and our counter bang stop the dead in its tracks right at 501 so just remember, uh, don't put your return uh, or breakpoint on return value because it doesn't work very good like that. Uh, I didn't remember that. So uh, we've set our breakpoints in a separate assembly, seen how we can stop that. We can de debug in our, in, in our separate files and our different routines, how we can pause the processor. Uh, we can continue. And the, the code takes off right where it was left off at without recompiling. Uh, what else can we do? Um, I think that'll be it for uh, for this uh, the debug issue here. I'll uh, be back with uh, another little uh, informative uh, video here in a little bit.